Hey everyone, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. There we are. End of video. End of video. Done. <laughs> it's a really simple video today. Uh, just talking quickly about boost and uh, a bit of gain stacking. Before we get into that though, housekeeping. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. We'd really appreciate it. And a massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grab some merch and help support the show. T-shirts, yeah. stickers, other things. Uh, Pedals. Lots, Believe it or not. Lots of things. Yeah, Indeed. that's our main way that we fund this show. In addition to that, if you're in the US and you want to buy some actual pedals, hit up that pedalshop.com. Very nice. Happy days. We've had a lot of uh, new people come into the fold. We have. So we just wanted to, uh, we bang on about gain staging all the time. So we want to give you a quick gain staging primer. Yes. And one of the questions we get asked almost more than any other is where do I put my boost? Yeah. So. Hopefully, those of you watching, if you are new, are au fait with overdrive distortion pedals. You've got that far already. Boost pedals are essentially the same thing, just with less overdrive. Yeah. And a lot of people sort of see them as a make louder device. As we are going to show in this video, they are not necessarily so. Um, so the question really is, do you put your boost before or after your overdrive pedal in the simplest of terms? Very good. So I guess what we need to do is, you know, if we think about boost, there are so many different sort of boosts. We're going to deal with two today. We're going to deal with a straight, clean boost. And the second one is one that's going to allow us to take a bit of bottom end off, maybe a bit more sizzly. Um, but let's have a look at the simplest one first. So this is the Ascent from Hampstead. It's a really fantastic, clean boost. Huge amounts of headroom. Uh, which is really important for this discussion. Yeah, let's hear it without any overdrive pedals. So you, all you're going to hear is the ascent uh, on and off straight into our clean amps today. And our amps are set pretty clean. It's a Marshall 50 watt plexi set clean uh, and a Tone King Imperial Mark II also set clean. And they sound like this. Makes louder. Makes louder. Takes all the frequencies, essentially just turns the volume up. Exactly. So it would stand to reason then if we have our make louder device after our overdrive pedal, that it will make that louder. So if you can play, yep. and then I'll, uh, let's plug into the Kaluna, really nice um, valve overdrive pedal. Oh, is Mitchell? it? Yeah, yeah. Valves. Proper, proper. Valve, high real, voltage, high voltage valve. Real valves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. It's amazing. So the obvious use for that is your solo. Yeah, nice. So if you're playing a bit of rhythm. Sorry. I had to stick some Harry Man on that. Uh, no need for me to mess about with any guitar controls there. Just happily playing away rhythm guitar on the boost after the overdrive, loud enough for a solo. Away you go. Into a clean up. But let's have a listen to what happens if we stick the same boost before the overdrive. So now the signal will be going guitar into the boost into the overdrive. Same settings. <laughs> So 
Sad face. Sad face. Actually, not sad face because it does. Uh, it has a nice effect on the tone. Yeah. But it doesn't make me any louder. Why? Because the overdrive pedal is limiting. So the way it creates the overdrive sound is it takes this. It takes our lovely signal, and it basically puts a border around it. It says you can only go so high, and when it reaches that level, it clips the edge of those waveform, the waveforms off. And that's what gives us the overdrive sound. So it stands to reason then that lovely clipped sound, if that goes into a make louder device that has all the headroom, it can take that clipped sound and make it louder. However, if the make louder device goes before the clipping stage, we've got those rails and our signal can't go above those, if we push more signal into that, it's just going to hit those rails harder. Yeah, so the effect is more distortion. Exactly that. More overdrive, which might be what you want, which partially answers the question, should you put your uh, boost before or after your overdrive? Doesn't matter what pickups you're using either or what guitar uh, type you have, this is going to be the same. The, the effect will be the same. Exactly, exactly. Right. So there's our clean boost. Now let's have a look at this. Uh, other boosts. We've got the Heavy Water by Thorpe, which is a really gorgeous sounding thing. Um, so if you play and then I'll just, uh, I'll just add the boost so we can just hear the boost on its own. Okay. <laughs> Holy moly, uh, both Dan and I have played a lot of boosts in our time. That thing has an unbelievable amount. Now, what it has, which is really clever, is a bass control. So why that's really uh, clever, well, or shall we say, why that's really good for a boost, is if you want to use that boost into an overdrive stage, it will boost those frequencies first and it'll help that cut through the mix. So instead of um, just having all of your signal going into that overdrive and then overdriving all those frequencies, we are going to overdrive those top end frequencies first. So it's the same concept that we have with treble boosters and things like that. If you think of sounds like, uh, you know, players like Tony Iommi, uh, Brian May, these guys use these things called treble boosters which is basically cuts out all the bottom end and it's all mids and treble pushing into an overdriven amplifier. Mm. What a lot of players found, if they just used a clean boost into the front end, everything became very mushy and woolly. Yeah, you lose it. We'll demonstrate that actually. So Dan, why don't you, um, why don't you play the Kaluna? I'm gonna turn the Kaluna up a bit so it's a bit more audible. Um, and first of all, let's hear, let's hear what happens when we've got the um, heavy water after the Kaluna, okay. and you'll hear that, hopefully you'll hear that great big uh, increase in volume. So uh, I'll, turn, I'll turn the pedals on as he plays. It's genuinely, genuinely one of the loudest boosts I've ever heard. That's flipping amazing. <laughs> what a great sound. So now we'll just do that exact same thing again, but you'll hear the uh, heavy water going into the front of the Kaluna. So. <laughs> So 
So audibly, not really any louder. Mm -hmm. um, might have been more... You might have been able to hear it more easily because the tonality had changed. Yeah. And then we get into the point, right? Totally. So, as Dan mentioned earlier, we've got that bass control uh, on the side of the booth. So all I'm going to do is ask him to play again. And I'm going to turn that bass control up and down right. and you can hear what happens uh, when that happens. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so you can decide where, which of those sounds you preferred. Yeah. Um, which one you like the best tends to be that the more distorted and the bassier the sound, the more we like it in isolation. It starts to become a problem, though. It does. So when you hear that in a mix, that really massive, um, you know, bass heavy distorted sound, it can become sort of nondescript. It gets lost really easily. Yeah. And, and in some instances, it's what you want especially if what you want is a massive sound under vocals, mm -hmm. that works really well. But if what you want is to come out and do your thing and everyone to hear you, sometimes it's, it's really important to be aware of the amount of bottom end. Yeah. So I've got a guitar that has way more bass in it than either of the two you've heard so far. Uh, Dan's Telly uh, and my Strat. This guitar is much more bass heavy, has a thicker mid range, mm. which means it has less prominent treble. So we'll just do the same thing. Um, I might even go on to the neck pickup so you can really hear the benefit of carving some of that bottom end away when you're boosting into the overdrive pedal. So if we just start with the Kaluna then, Dan, and see where we are. Okay. Um... <laughs> So, so, so much gain. Sounds amazing though. Yeah. So just to add, were you going to talk about amp gain for a second there? Well, we're just going to talk about the, the general idea of gain staging. Yeah. You've got to remember it starts here and then finishes at the amp. So this will all change at volume when the amp starts to work a bit harder. Yeah. Because um, the amp, the, the limiting thing we are talking about before, the amp limits and that gives us that, that lovely valve overdrive that we love, right? But when the amp starts to limit, it's we don't have the headroom, the amp doesn't have anywhere to go. So if we 
have a, you know a clean boost in the amplifier, it will start doing the same thing that the Kaluna is doing when we have the boost going into it. It yeah. starts to limit more. In that respect, you can see your amp just as another gain stage. Essentially, exactly. the front end of your amp, if you have it overdriven, is essentially just another overdrive pedal. Yeah, totally. You could view it like that. And in that situation where the amp is overdriving a bit more, especially old school amps, that's when you really get the benefit of knocking some of that bass end down a bit. Yeah, totally. To maintain clarity, to help with the feedback a little bit from guitars like this, but mostly to just remain clear and focused so that you can be heard not washing away down there with the kick drum and the bass guitar. Yep. And it might also mean that in your perfect setup, you need two boosts. You want one boost to push the front of the pedals. I want to hacksaw that down the middle, have that, that one before and the and one, one on the right after. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, that's a great idea. <laughs> Thorpey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so you might want, you know, a gain stage in front of your overdrives just to, you know, help add that bit of gain um, and, and, you know, boost that, uh, you know, the, you know, change that texture of the overdrive, then a clean boost right at the end of everything to take yep. that sound and make louder. Yeah. So it's identifying what you want your boost to do. Do you want an overall make louder device? Do you want to have more gain? Um, and then choose your boost accordingly. Indeed. You can do all of this with overdrive pedals as well. Watch some of our other videos on that, understanding overdrive pedals being one of them. And if you run the gain really low, the overdrive really low and the volume really high, you can make it act like a boost pedal. So Indeed. you don't necessarily need a separate boost pedal if you've never tried this before. But that's it, isn't it? I mean, it's the it's the middle and both ends of gain staging. Yeah. And that when people talk about gain staging, gain stacking, any fancy names you want to put on it, it's basically attaching a bunch of overdrive pedals or overdrive pedals and an amp together and the sum total uh, of volume and overdrive and compression and all of those things that you get by chaining all those things together. Indeed. It really helps, if you're new to this, it really helps to think of your signal path like flowing water, all right? And, you know, it's, got, it's linear, right? It's got to go in one and then out to the next one. So, uh, you know, when you're deciding on what order to put these things in, it just, you know, it just helps to think the signal has to flow and it goes all the way through and things happen to it on the way. Indeed. So the, the conclusion is, Dan, if you want your sound to be louder, where do you put the boost? Put the boost at the end of everything. If you want to create more overdrive harmonics and distortion and not necessarily get any louder, where do you put your boost? Before your overdrives. If you want to do both, what do you need? You need both. <laughs> you need both. I need a flip and heavy water. That's just yeah. blow my mind. <laughs> cool. Brilliant. Thank you so much for watching. Um, a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Really appreciate your support. Also, a massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Anderton's Music of Guildford in Surrey, where I bought this guitar. And your new Strat. And the new Strat. Happy days. Good man. Uh, also, our dear friends in Australia. Would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane in Queensland. Where I bought my... Uh... Nice. 1980. April 1980. Yes. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> Also, a massive thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed some merch and t-shirts, hats and mugs and pedals and stuff. Uh, it really helps us support the show. So thank you very much. Thank you. And if you're in the US and you want to buy some pedals, head to thatpedalshop.com. Lots of stuff going on. Yeah, excellent. Uh, thanks so much. We will see you on Monday for viewers' comments and questions where we can discuss all this stuff. Awesome. Have a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.